So even here, you have what could have been backside, and then front side could have been here, or it actually could have been right here, because you can see the valley right here, the front side of the move, right? It's just a matter of how greedy does this go? Where do people reinject? There could possibly be a few front sides in here. But again, you, relatively, you can make the right choice 80 to 90% of the time, as long as you understand how they work, right? And then you, you know, you, your range is defined. So we just broke down a little piece. And if we go to the hourly, you can see all we really broke down was that there was this little tiny section right here. This is all we did. We just broke down this little section, right? That, that's, that's quite simply all we did. So we're just going to let this play out and see kind of what happens. Aha, you see? Cool. I wonder why this level gets hit. It's still an independent range, right? So this range, tested, untested, I'm not sure. We'd actually have to go into here and take a look and see what happened. But now you can see where this is the backside of a move. So it's going to cause a large bounce. This is a strong level because it's the backside to something else's front side, right? So like this is, this is the same stuff we always talk about, right? So you can see where it tries to test this range and it tests this range and falls immediately to the top of its next range. So it fails the top of one range and immediately tests the top of the next range. So if you were to go back here and take out all these front side, back side levels, because they were already you know, used and tested and all, and all that stuff in here. And, you know, you always want to be greedy with this stuff. And so we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of all, all this stuff in here that's already used up and it's already gone. And, you know, we, I started by identifying the range here. You know, this is the top of one range. This is the top of another, another range. Almost as if this was a backside to this front side, right? So, so almost as if it was a backside to the front side. And, and this is like a combination backside, front side level to its own set of ranges inside of here, right? So, so then you, you, know, you go to the minute candles here and you see it's tested, it's not moving up, it's failing, it instantly goes down. And, and, and this is like a, a really, I'm sure this is a, like an alarming amount that it went down. It looks like it's about 5% that it went down here. No, that's not the right tool. What am I doing? So it goes down, yeah, four, 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 almost 5% here it goes down. Quite alarming, but where it goes makes total sense. It's like, oh, this, this is the perfect level to buy. This is the backside range. That's strong bounce level. This is where the move will bounce. It's a strong bounce moment, right? And then, and then so, you know, dictated by the event of time as well and, and how strong the level is. It's a one-hour level. You're not talking about a three-minute front side level. You're talking about a one-hour backside level relative to how fast this is moving down. That's a hell of a hold level. We already have the backside of this range hit. And we already have, this range was already tested and used up. This is relatively untouched and unused, this stuff in here. You can see all the noise that's, that's right here and, you know, all the tests that happen and it goes up and it comes down and develops a range and, you know, has to have all these moves in it. And meanwhile, you have this right here, which is kind of, you know, most likely just, well, you can kind of tell by the candle. There's not a lot of noise in the chart there. It's, it's kind of just you know, it probably just has a, a relatively clean move up where, where it doesn't come back down and up and down and kind of tests like crazy. It just kind of breaks over, right? So it just kind of has its own untested range. Like it never actually comes back and breaks over, struggles to get above. It actually just kind of breaks over its range and, and, and just leaves it as, as, as its own independent untested range, right? So it kind of just leaves it completely by itself. It, you know, it makes total sense why when you, when you come down here, it's uh, the perfect buying opportunity, like literally the perfect buying opportunity within two hours. I wonder how much money you actually make on this by, by understanding the range. Yeah. Like 11% in two hours. It's a little, little silly. Makes sense why you did though, because there's a lot of many and many and many of millions of dollars that instantly gets injected here that, you know, takes this thing up to some even range in here. So let's look at that. Like what range did it test in here? Like you can even go to the hourly and see where the, uh, the tested range is in here, right? So you would say like the range lies somewhere between this point here, right? And uh, we're going to use this one just because it's already on our screen. The range lies between somewhere between that point and this point. So, so when we start breaking down the ranges, you know, at very first you have, well, we're just going to break them down and, and see. So you'd have this right here you'd have which is actually tested right there right so so actually this does come up test pull back reject you'd have this part of the range here which is also already tested in any ways right here so if this one is tested technically this one's not really that great this would kind of be the first untested level right like this is the first untested part of the range which would be its own backside to whatever front side is right here, right? Like this is the front side valley. Just like we looked at when we looked at the, the weekly and we did the daily and it's immediate level right to the right. 
backside frontside combination, right? Greedy level versus strong level. What needs to hold it over time versus what needs to hold it in the moment, right? So fine, you have you you come up and you actually hit this level, but that's fine. You could have just shorted this or or, or sold that. You know, you're you're in here and you can just sell this. It's kind of the backside of the the range. It immediately pulls back and then it goes after this level a second time. So I kind of see this as the first test of this right here. And then this one here is the first test of this right here, right? So now this is going to try to hold over time to break because again, it's a stronger level. It's not going to have this kind of instant reaction like this one did, right? It's going to have more of a elongated pullback, right? So then you can even see the backsides of range, like the, uh, the inverse range finding. And then, you know, even here you would say there's the range there to this here. So, so like, where is this going to bounce, right? So we can just, you know, we're going to maybe delete this one. We don't need that. Um, and you can even see this is it's, its own range right here. So then you would like look in here and you would say, well, where's, Where's the range here? Let's go take a look. You know, you'd have backside of the range right here, right? You'd have the backside here, uh, which you're seeing being tested. And, um, you know, could even be here maybe on a five minute. Let's go take a look. Or maybe there's a 15 minute. We always have to kind of do our job and find the, uh, the right time frames, right? So you have front side right there. You have... First, it would have been this, which is fine. But then we're looking for the kind of the uh, untested stuff, right? And you have backside, front side, right there like that. So let's see how this plays out. Backside gets tested. It's gone. Well, maybe the backside holds. Oh boy, wouldn't that be nice for once? Usually they go right after the greediest levels. Well, let's just see. I'm not going to say anything yet. There's the test of the level again. Oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. So you can see this actually went after the greediest part of the front side of the move, right? So backside, front side combinations as to where once this is tested, we move this to the backside like this, whatever. Maybe we have a different time frame here. Five minute. Yeah. So we, we had a different time frame. So we, so we had the wrong time frame selected here, which is fine. That's part of, part of doing what we're supposed to do. And then this, this is its own independent range, right? Like you've got the backside to this front side, right? So then you have the backside test pulls back. We have a front side test. And I wonder if we missed anything else inside of here. Like this is a pretty good level, but you do have a lot greedier stuff here, right? Like technically you would have backside, front side range, right? Technically you'd have this. Now, whether this goes after this or not, I'm not sure. That's, that's quite greedy. I would think it would, you know, maybe go after something like this instead right here, which actually it does, 5908. So then if there's another, excuse me, if there's another rebuy, it's here. It's at this level here, this 5836. It's kind of the greediest front side that protects the entirety of the top of this range, which the top of that range is, is it got its own whole stuff in here, right? There's, a, you know, a bunch of stuff in here. So, you know, kind of once you lose this, you, you've already like broken the range almost. Yeah, and you can see it attempts to go for it. Maybe it uses this right here because it had already been previously held. Maybe it's just using the front of this right here. Like something super greedy, right? Like we, we did see this level right here, I believe is what we had marked prior. And this does get tested and then, and then it gets held, right? So, you know, greed and ranges versus where you take entry. But you, at least you have decision points now and you could have said like, I'll enter here or I just won't enter the trade. Or I'll enter here, or I just won't enter the trade. And it takes out all the uh, decisions in between, right? So then, you know, even, even here you have, and we can maybe just go to a higher time frame to walk this through now. Even here, you have kind of the uh, final decisions where, you know, on larger time frames, it's, it's, you know, quite obvious, but then so you get to the smaller time frames and try to find these acute points and, and backside front sides of ranges and, you know, you'll, you'll find them, right? So let's maybe just go to, oh, we're in the moment here. So, so, so even right now, I would look at this chart and I would say, where is your range? Your range is now, we know this is the bottom of the range, right? Which means... Uh, this is kind of the uh, the top of the range that it's currently in, which we already know is testing something in here. So, so this is kind of the range that it's in, what it's testing down versus what it's testing up. And we're just going to take all this stuff off the screen and, try and start trying to find the levels of, of what it's doing. So this is that 15 minute. And it's, so this is perfectly fine. That's like, you know, its own backside front side combination here or whatever. So, so the range is right here. Let's make sure we have this correct on the hourly. We don't. The range is actually right here. This is where the move starts. So, so this is one of the levels inside of it. So we actually have to find the levels inside of here. This is obviously the greediest. 
We've got the backside right here, which is untested. So this is like a perfect spot to uh, take profits or to short. Enter short or take profits because now you've got a tested backside range here to this little region. Now you're going to have the same thing over here and we can go find the, the kind of the combinations. Backside, then quite simply put, greediest front side. You do have another front side like right here. I didn't think there was anything on the 15 minute in here, is there? I think it's pretty much just, you know, your ranges from here to there. So, so we're just going to start finding the greediest valleys, what looks like smart places to uh, inject. Yeah, you have this right here or this right here. Let's see if there's a, a three minute combination. Definitely have two levels here. Which one you go after is up to you. 6604 versus 66, 60, wait, did I say that right? Yeah, 6604 versus 6506. 6566 versus 6600. Okay, perfect. 6600 is like the kind of like a psychological level, they call it. And it's, a, it's a psychological level, guys. It's not, definitely not. It's not psychological at all. It's actually just the uh, part of its range. I would go after the 6600 level because it has a five minute range on it. Oh, they both do. This is a decision we have to make. I, I would measure this and I would say, okay, if I do enter here, you know, will I get liquidated there? That's something if I'm doing like 100x trading, I would say, is there enough to liquidate me here? No, I guess theoretically you could take both levels. Although again, you could test the, the very final piece of this range. So, so you have to be careful because then, you know, you have its own range inside of here and you do have this right here. What is this? 6624. So yeah, I think I might wait. I think I might look for this. 66.24 level. It's really greedy, but it's definitely going to get rejected, right? Like it's, it's, it's super greedy, but so, so, so there's a knife catch here somewhere between this level, this level, and this level. So, you know, we, we can't really know what's getting hit until we're kind of moving up into these other regions. And there's other stuff we look at when we're looking at, oh, is this, is this a good area, right? And then even that might not be correct because you might reject the backside of the move, which is this front side here. So you have a range combination here as well. So these are all the levels that are going to get tested on the way up. You're going to have a test on one, you pull back a test on another, pull back a test on another, pull back until you get to the final level where you have the, the, you know, the huge knife catch. Maybe you go like this, pull back to here, and then you go like this, pull back to here and go like this, and then maybe pull back to here, creating some kind of trend. And then you end up going into this region here and you know, these here and these here and these here. And then, and then you finally get this and then you have a big, you know, pull back down because it's those greediest levels that will, within a range, that will uh, break a move, move that move down where, where all the capital gets injected there. So this is um, range finding. And when we look at hold and break levels, there is, we first define them by saying, go for the highest time frames and just find the spots where it's going to bounce because that's easy money, right? Like even, even here, Yes, okay, I'm very good at what I do, so I could find this level here, 69.35, no problem. Get why it's the level I understand that's the, you know, the part of the range that's greedier. It makes total sense, right? It makes total sense as to why I should, should enter a trade here. You know, theoretically, if you were to just go on the daily, and if, even if you're just doing 10x leverage, you know, 100x leverage is playing at the highest level in, in, in trading. Like there's, there's nothing higher than 100x. It's the pro leagues, right? You do 100x and you can make, five, five figures a day. You can have days where you make a hundred thousand dollars or even more, right? So, so, you know, doing a hundred X is a you know, different game. There's no reason why you couldn't have just found the greediest, the range here and shorted the range on like 10 X or even five X or something like that. And just took 18% profits, which is, you know, on 10 X is still 180% in one day. So that 10 X here would, you know, 18,000 or sorry, not thousand, 1800% in one scenario with, you know, if you can range find the exact moments, right? You can range find that exact moment right here. Yeah, sure. You can hundred X and it's 1800%, but there's nothing saying that you can't just find these greedier points right here in the charts and uh, do a 10 X with a, you know, a good amount and, you know, 180% the next day. Like you could, you could double your account if you, if you, you know, if you were just trading an active account as we, you know, we talk about that in the blueprint where it's your active account versus your main account, right? So if you're just trading your active account, what you're willing to lose, you know, you could have just tripled your account almost like uh, if you, got the bottom. Say you only made 150% because you did 15, right? 15% 15 of the move. You still, you know, 1.5x your entire active account, which is, which is great for one day's work. That's insane. Like that people can't even make that in six months. So you range find 
And as you get better at range finding, you increase leverage to, to see like, oh, I'm a better range finder. I, I can increase leverage because I understand how to reduce risk in these knife catches even further, right? So using our knowledge to, to refine our levels, to refine our choices, our decision moments. And I think a lot of people struggle because they don't, they don't, can't quite like, this is an easy level to find. Understanding that it's its own independent range is, is not an easy concept to understand, right? It's an easy level to find, but what, what's the difference between that one and this one, right? Like why not knife catch this one versus this one? You know, very specific reasons. We touched upon some of them today. We didn't touch upon all of them, but we touched upon some of them today as to why somebody wouldn't, you know, knife catch this level for a hundred X versus something here. And this just melts through like butter, right? Like, oh, it's untested, but you know, it's still just melts through like butter. Why? Right. So, so, you know, you have your own reasoning there. And, you know, again, we talked, talked about some of it today, but you know, maybe not all of it. And then, so, so there's still all the other stuff going on in the charts, so, you know, trends and, you know, so you have this trend here like this, or, you know, to that candle there, this one here. So you have trends that break off certain ranges and, and things like this. So, you know, range finding is super important, you know, to kind of sum it up and I'll just delete this chart here. That's fine. You can just delete this chart to sum it up. You know, you start by doing this. You start by saying you go to, you go to a high time frame and you just start by defining a range. Top of the range, bottom of the range and work through it from that point. And work through it and find more minute ranges from that point. Work through it and find where is your first range? Well, your first range would have been here before it was broken. Like in this moment, you would have been here. So you're just going to find your range. And then your range gets defined to this point right here, the backside right here. So, so then you can just start going in there and saying, you got the backside there, right? We've got the front side, what looks like maybe here. I think we need to go further time frames to find the, the proper front side. But we could just use those two points for this example and see how they are reacted. There's the one bounce and uh, oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. So, so we've got the uh, backside range here. Upon doing this, I would actually say this is the, the proper backside range because that, that's the valley that creates kind of the origin point. You know, you can't always just use the top of a candle. Like it's just oh, top of a four-hour candle. Well, there's a greedier point inside that four-hour candle. It's a 15-minute origin. And then, and then even in, in there, there's a 15-minute valley here, or this is an hourly valley, which I'd like to see actually where the greediest point in that is. So then you'd have kind of the uh, ranges right here in, in here, right? So this is not going to be respected. Where, where do we have that candle pinned first? So you'd have, let's go to a higher time frame here, see what we can see. Backside. And then you'd have a front side range down in this region somewhere. So I'm just going to pin it to the top of this candle and see where it is. Yeah, it's actually right there. There's the valley right there. So you'd have kind of, you know, your two ranges. Biggest bounce, greediest level, right? Backside and front side of the range. So even we can just go in here and the, see how this reacts, maybe from a little bit further back. Even we can just go to three minute charts here maybe and just see what happens. So you do have your first bounce and you, you know, you, you so fine, you're going to pull back off of this first backside level, right? Like you've got the backside, you even have a backside further back here, but you know, I, I think this would be a pretty good target here, um, whether it gets hit or not, you know, another question. And then, and then, so you see, you go through your one range and then you hit your next range, right? And then you try to hold this range and it kind of just already falls through the range. And that's where you have the collapse of the move and sure it moves down in quite a big way. And it does, right? And then you go and you uh, are, are already you know, seeing the spots where your range is, is being respected, right? Like you have range being respected and, you know, we won't talk about this here, about what we do in this scenario where we have a range that we're not using and we come up and above it. We won't talk about this, but, you know, I guess it's pretty obvious on the screen. There's, you know, important information there from those previous ranges, but, uh, you know, not, not, not really important for for today's lesson, maybe a little over, over the top for today's lesson, a little bit uh, well past what we need to be concerning ourselves with right now. So yeah, I think that's a great, great start for range defining. I think that's a great start for understanding that we don't just have strong levels and greedy levels, although that's how we learn them. It, it's a very easy way to understand where some of these bigger points in the charts lie. And we can just take the backside bounces and and the greedy bounces are, I, you know, I, I start by calling them the, uh, the greedy and the strong levels. So, so the strong levels are the backsides and the greedy levels are the front sides, right? So we just start by, by calling them those. But now we're moving on to understanding them at a, at a deeper level. 
there's a range that gets defined and we call them front and backside legs. And then there's combination levels, which is front side, backside legs. So this is a good break into a little bit of a, a different set of materials here. So yeah, I hope that uh, makes sense. Okay, good. 